now we'll talk about the concept of measure of dispersion uh, in today class for the subject called numerical statistical method very important subject for bc second semester and in this when we talk about measure of dispersion we have lot of tools uh, we have tools like range we have tools like range we have tools like mean deviation when we talk about measure of dispersion we have tools like range we have mean deviation okay we have quartile deviation we have third tools called uh, quartile uh, deviation we have quartile deviation okay. then we have standard deviation we have lot of tools to study the measure of dispersion out of all these tools the most important tool is is standard deviation okay for your exam also the questions will come from standard deviation not from mean deviation or range or quartile deviation okay so you will get question only on standard deviation but we'll just uh, briefly we'll see all these concept uh, where we focus more on standard deviation okay uh, remember uh, in the concept of standard deviation standard deviation is represented well called sigma okay and the square of standard deviation is called variance variance is the square of standard deviation you can remember so variance when we say variance so variance is basically so if i have to represent variance variance is basically the square of standard deviation with that we can represent variance variance is the square of standard deviation that you can remember okay then there is another term which you can remember that is called coefficient of variance there is another term called coefficient of variation or variance coefficient of variation or variance so the formula for that is standard deviation by mean the coefficient of variation formula is standard deviation by mean into 100 that we call as coefficient of variation very important to so you get definitely one question either on coefficient of variation or uh, you will get one question on on weight standard deviation of variance two marks question comes based on this formula only guys so two marks question will come based on this formula if i open the numerical statistical method question paper let me see if there is any question based on this formula only in the cf there is no question you can see this which year this question came this question came in uh, june june july this 2018 find the coefficient of variation if the arithmetic mean is 9.58 standard deviation 14.20 standard deviation is 14.0 standard deviation is 14.0 standard deviation is 14.0 standard deviation is 14.0 standard deviation is 14. Point. standard deviation is 14.2 standard deviation is 14.2 and and mean is 9.58 and you mean is 9.58 so if you want to solve this you will get the coefficient of variation so find this value 14.28 uh, divided by 9.58 into 100 1.4.20 divided by 9.5 14.20 one four two zero one four two zero divided by 9.5 we will get 148.225 148.225 this is 1.4.20 by 9.58 so your coefficient of variation is One one forty eight point two two five percent. 
this is your coefficient of rotation. Simple based on this formula, you get a question. To so get a question simply based on this formula, you can easily do that. I don't think so. You will face any problem. Similarly, you see this again. Find the coefficient of variation. This came in which year? 2019. Find the coefficient of variation given the mean is. 1.2 standard deviation 1.378. The standard deviation is 1.378. So your standard deviation, your standard deviation is 1. Point, your standard deviation is 1.378. 1.378 divided by mean. Your mean is 1.2. This is this is 137.8. Divide by one point two. One seven one three seven eight by two. One three seven eight by two. If I do one three seven eight by two. One one four point eight. One one four point eight. One one four point eight. This would be a coefficient of variation. So this this all come for two marks. This all come every year for two marks, but it will come for you. So you can see it's such easy problem. So if it comes, uh, then you should not face any issue. So it's very easy. You can easily do that. Clear? Anyone have any doubt? So you understood. So here basically. In measure of dispersion, uh, we'll discuss a lot of concepts. We'll talk about range, mean deviation, quartile deviation, standard deviation. But the most important concept is basically the concept of standard deviation only. When we say range, what is range? Range is basically uh, highest value minus lowest value. So when we say range, range, range basically means if you get a set of data, what is the highest value? The minus the lowest value that you do that is range. Next thing, the coefficient of range. Coefficient of range. So the coefficient of range would be highest value by minus lowest value divided by highest value plus lowest value into that is coefficient of range. I think you can easily understand this. Okay, so imagine if I give you something like 12, 17, 19, 84, 64, then 17, then 26, then 12, then minus 2, something like this. If I ask you what is the range, if I ask you what is the range of this number, range basically means highest value minus lowest value the difference of them the difference of them highest what is the highest so your highest is 84 i guess your highest is 84 and your lowest is minus 2 so the range is 86 and what is the coefficient of range the so highest value minus lowest value that is 86 divided by highest value minus lowest value that will be 82 into 100 you do this that you will get the coefficient of range. I hope you understood the, the concept of range. And in, the, in the concept of range, imagine if you get a class interval with frequency. Imagine if you get a class interval with frequency. So something 20 to 30, then 17, then 30 to 40, then 54. 23 something like this question is given to you you want the range what is the range what is the range so the range what is the range range is highest value minus lowest value so what is the highest value here so the highest value here if you focus on range frequency doesn't matter no frequency highest value is 50 what is the lowest value the lowest value here is 10 what is the range? Your range is 40. And here frequency doesn't matter. If frequency doesn't matter at all. I hope you're understanding. So you have 12 numbers between 10 to 20. 
you have 17 numbers between 20 to 30. So here it doesn't matter no, how many times a number repeat for me. It doesn't matter at all. What matters to me is which number is the highest number, which number is the lowest number. That's it. That is what matters to me. So you know about range. Uh, you know about uh, coefficient of range. Okay, you know about coefficient of range. Okay, then uh, we talk about mean deviation and all. Now the next thing we talk about is mean deviation. When we talk about the concept of mean deviation, the concept of mean deviation is summation of modulus of x minus x bar divided by n. This is mean deviation concept. If, if you have a raw data, then you'll use this as a formula for the mean deviation. If you get a raw data, then we use this as a formula for mean deviation when we have a raw data. And if you have class interval with frequency, then we use this formula sum of f modulus of x minus x bar y sum of f. This is the formula of mean deviation uh, you'll use if you have class interval with frequency. So if your data is given in the form of class interval with frequency, data is given in the form of class interval with frequency, then these are the formulas what you will follow uh, to calculate the mean division. Uh, if you have raw data or you have a data of class interval with frequency. So you simply, what is X bar? The X bar here means average. So when we use the term X bar, X bar here means average. Average can be arithmetic mean, geometric mean, harmonic mean, it can be median, it can be mode. So the, they, they can be the X bar value. If nothing given, you can take simply the mean as the as the X bar, if nothing is given. Otherwise, uh, you, can, you can take median, mode, anything. I can ask to calculate the mean deviation by median method. So you will take X bar as a median. Or if I ask you to calculate the mean deviation by, by mode method, so you will take X bar as a mode. So I hope you understand. It. So then if if I ask you what is coefficient of mean deviation, if I ask you what is the coefficient of mean deviation, if I'm asking the coefficient of mean deviation, if I'm asking the coefficient of mean deviation, so in the in the question of coefficient of mean deviation what do you actually do in the coefficient of mean deviation what you actually do you use the formula called mean deviation okay, by mean or median or mode whatever mean deviation by average average can be mean average can be median average and mode this is the formula of coefficient of mean deviation okay everyone so you use this formula whenever you get a problem on mean deviation, you can use this and you can get the answer very easily. Now, uh, if you are still not very clear about uh, the formula part, what I'm discussing here, so you can remember like, suppose you have a class interval 10 to 20, then 20 to 30, then 40 to 50, then you have 50 to 60, and you have frequency like 17, 12, 5, and then maybe seven something. So like this, I want to calculate the mean deviation. Suppose I want to calculate the mean deviation for this data. I want to calculate the mean deviation for this data. If I want to calculate the mean deviation of this data, the first thing what I'll try to calculate, I'll try to calculate the mid value. The mid value is 15, then 25, then 35, and then 45. But what I need to do for mean deviation, if nothing's given, I simply ask you, calculate the mean deviation. You need average, right? So you can take average as a mean. If nothing's given, you take mean. If if they want you to calculate a median or more, they'll specify properly. So in that, now I can write D. D, I don't want to multiply F into X. Okay. So because I don't know 17 to 15 is how much, so I can write D. D is equal to X minus 15 by 10 step deviation method if I'm going to find the mean this will be zero this is one this is two this is three and I'll multiply f into t this will be zero twelve into one twelve five into two ten and seven into three twenty one 
sum of f d is equal to forty three. You get the mean. You get sum of f d is forty three. So now I can find the mean. Now I can find the mean. Mean is equal to as you mean plus h into sum of f d by sum of f. As you mean, as you mean is equal to fifteen. As you mean is equal to fifteen plus h. H is equal to ten. Sum of f d is forty three divided by sum of f. Sum of f. Sum of f is seventeen plus twenty nine. Ah, uh, twenty nine plus five, thirty four, thirty four plus seven, forty one, forty one. You can just solve it. You get the as you mean. So you get the arithmetic mean. This is fifteen plus four thirty by forty one. Fifteen plus four thirty by forty one. Four thirty by. Forty one ten point four eight seven ten point four eight seven eight ten point four eight seven eight plus fifteen if you do on this twenty five point four eight twenty so arithmetic mean is twenty five point four eight so your arithmetic mean is twenty five four eight let take twenty five as approx okay so let take arithmetic mean is twenty five as approx. Okay, then I got the arithmetic mean. Okay, now what you have to do? Find x minus x bar. X minus x bar. So fifteen minus twenty five minus ten. Twenty five minus twenty five zero. Thirty five minus twenty five ten. Forty five minus twenty five twenty. You get x minus x bar. Now what you have to do here in mean division? You have to find modulus of x minus x bar. This is ten zero ten twenty. Modulus sign means that you ignore the negative value. So either it's negative, positive, you will get output as a positive only. Then multiply f into modulus of x minus x bar. So f f is equal to seventeen hmm, seventeen into seventeen into ten one seventy zero into twelve. This is equal to zero. Then ten into ten into five fifty. Ten into five fifty. Then then seven 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 into twenty seven into twenty one forty. The sum of f the modulus of f minus h bar is equal to zero nine. Nine plus seven, six. Nine plus seven, sixteen. Ah, uh, three sixty. Sum of f x minus x bar is three sixty. So once you get that, once you get that, now I'll find the mean deviation. Mean deviation is what? Mean deviation is summation of f modulus of x minus x bar by summation of f. This is three sixty divided by summation of that is forty one. Eight point seven eight. Eight point seven eight. So you got the mean division. Okay, you got this as a mean division. So your mean division is eight point seven eight. If I ask you coefficient of mean division. If I ask you coefficient of mean deviation, so eight point seven eight divided by twenty five, so that would be coefficient of mean deviation. Coefficient of mean deviation basically means mean deviation by average into hundred. So if I ask you what is coefficient of mean deviation, if I ask you what is coefficient of mean deviation, the coefficient of mean deviation that is equal to Mean deviation by average. So here average is mean only into hundred. So mean deviation is eight point eight point seven eight into hundred by twenty five. So you solve this. That is your answer. Coefficient of mean deviation is eight seventy eight fourza eight point seven eight. This is fourza. This is fourza. This is eight fourza thirty two three carry thirty one. Three carry thirty five point one two. 
that is your coefficient of mean deviation i hope you understood the concept of coefficient of mean deviation what is mean deviation what is range what is coefficient of range all this term you understood so we i will not go into detailed to understand all this concept okay i then give you separate videos to understand them now the next thing we'll understand is the quartile deviation quartile deviation formula is q3 minus q1 by 2 okay i have then this next thing we should know is coefficient of quartile deviation the next thing we should know is the coefficient of quartile deviation coefficient of quartile deviation so when we say coefficient of quartile deviation it is q3 minus q1 divided by q3 plus q1 into 100 this is coefficient of quartile deviations now what are quartiles you have two kinds of quartiles already in this class when i was teaching you median i told you partitions values like quartile decile percentile if you forgot by this time then it's time that you should watch my video on that uh, median quartile decile percentile everything i have done in one class so you can go through that to you will that will make you to understand in much more better way so coefficient of quartile deviation what is, that is q3 minus q1 by q3 plus q1 into 100 quartile deviation is q3 minus q1 by 100 so here q1 is called lower quartile here q1 we called as lower quartile q1 we will call as lower quartile and q3 we will call this as the upper quartile q3 we will call this as a upper quartile you three will call it as a upper quartile you remember right how we used to find the values i hope you remember that uh, if i give you raw data if i give you raw data then you arrange the data in ascending order okay if you remember right if you if i give you raw data and ask you the calculation of quartiles and all okay if i ask you calculation of quartiles and all how will you calculate if i give you raw data first thing you will arrange the data in ascending order first thing you will arrange the data in ascending order you will arrange the data in the ascending order so once you arrange the data in the ascending order then then what is q1 lower quartile q1 is equal to n plus 1 by fourth observation okay that is q1 while what is q3 Q3 means upper quartile. Q3 means 3 into n plus 1 by fourth observation. This is third quartile. Q3. So Q1 is n plus 1 by fourth observation. Q3 is 3 into n plus 1 by fourth observation. So once you get Q1, Q3, so if you subtract and divide by 2, uh, you will get a quartile deviation. Okay. So Q3 minus Q1 is called interquartile range. Q3 minus Q1 will call this as the interquartile range. Will call this as the interquartile range. Everyone understand the meaning of the term range, interquartile range. This is called interquartile range. Okay. This this you understand Q1, Q3, the formulas and all. You arrange the data in ascending order, and then you will find the the Q1 value and Q3 value. Okay. Similarly, if I give you class interval with frequency, similarly, if I give you class interval with frequency, if I give you class interval with frequency, if I give you class interval with frequency, if I give you class interval uh, with frequency, then how do you used to find Q1? Q1 formula was L plus H by F. Into sum of f by four minus c f. This was the formula of Q one. Q three formula was L plus h by f. Q three formula is L in L plus h by f three into sum of f by four minus c f. Three into sum of f by four minus c f. How we used to put the data? What is L? What is h? What is f? Okay, how we used to decide quartiles and all guys. You remember the way how we used to do median. The same logic we use for quartiles also to decide. 
okay how we should decide that how we should decide that so we we make sure that uh, we have data in class interval then we have the data in frequency okay and then we write less than cumulative frequency then we write less than cumulative frequency then we write less than cumulative frequency so how we to get less than cumulative frequency by simply adding frequency okay you remember right less than cumulative frequency more than cumulative frequency already i have discussed a lot in my previous classes okay so we write them in less than cumulative frequency then for quartile one if i have to do calculation of quartile one then if i have to do the calculation of quartile one then what i need i need to first find i need to first find sum of f by four first i have to find this value okay whatever is this value whatever is this value so maybe this value suppose x then what i'll do i'll check once i get this value what i'll do once i get this value once i once i find sum of f by four then what i'll do i'll check in the i'll check in the less than i'll check in the less than cumulative frequency table then what i'll do i'll check in the less than once i get the value sum of f by 4 i'll check in the less than cumulative i'll, I'll check in the less than cumulative frequency table i'll check in less than cumulative frequency table the value the next value the next value the next value higher than the next value higher than the next value higher than sum of f by 4 for quartile 1 okay and for quartile 3 what i'll do and for quartile 3 and for quartile 3 we'll check for quartile 3 we will check for quartile 3 we'll check we'll check next value higher than for the quartile 3 we'll check next value higher than we'll find next value higher than the next value higher than 3 into sum of f by 4 for quartile value quartile 3 will check the next value higher than sum of 3 3 into sum of f by 4 and for, for quartile 1 you will find for quartile 1 you will find sum of f by 4 for quartile 3 you will find 3 into sum of f by 4 so this will do this for quartile 3 this will do for quartile 1 okay once we once we got this value once we uh, once we got this value, sum of f by 4 for quartile 1, 3 into sum of f by 4 for quartile 3, then we will see the table less than cumulative frequency table. Then we will see in less than uh, cumulative frequency table, the next value which is higher than sum of f by 4 and while for, for, for quartile 3, we will see the next value which is higher than 3 into sum of f by 4. Okay, so once, uh, once you get those values, once you uh, once you get those values, once you get that value, so we'll check the next value. So the, whatever the next value, the next value higher than the next value, next value higher than the next value higher than sum of f by four. And in case of Q1, in case the next value higher than sum of f by four, in case of Q1 and 3 into sum of f by 4. In case of Q2 and 3 into sum of f by 3 into sum of f by 4. So next value is higher than sum of f by 4 in case of Q1 and 3 into sum of f by 4 in case of Q2. Okay, in case of not Q2, in case of Q3, okay, are the are the required are the required selected row are the required selected row are the required selected row for the calculation for the calculation so once you get the next value higher once you select them that is your selected row from where you get the answer okay so now now what we'll do now l now l is the lower limit L is the lower limit of the selected class interval. L would be 
the lower limit of your selected class interval l would be the lower limit of your selected class interval okay and your h is the class size class size of the selected class interval your h is the class size of the selected class interval frequency is the frequency corresponding to this class whatever is the frequency frequency corresponding to the so the f is the frequency which is corresponding to this class interval okay then and cf cf basically means one one cumulative frequency uh, so the ca basically means the cumulative frequency ca basically means the cumulative frequency ca basically means the cumulative frequency before the selected class interval before the selected class interval once you understood all this now you simply put the data and you get the answer of your quartiles quartile 1 quartile 3 either it is raw data or either it is a class interval and frequencies so if you require problems on this quartiles deciles and all we have lot of formulas which we can discuss the link and then we can with that so i hope you understood all this term so we have talked about uh, in 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 the in the concept of measure of dispersion uh, we have spoken till now about mean Uh, sorry in we have spoken about till now about range quartile deviation then mean deviation okay then the second and the most important parameter uh, would be the standard deviation and the square standard deviation is variance you know that very well the square standard deviation uh, is variance so you can we can do that calculation for the for the variance standard deviation and all and that way we can get the answer very easily Okay, so imagine if you get a calculation of standard deviation. So remember, standard deviation when we talk about standard deviation. Okay, this is sigma. So the formula of sigma when you have raw data is summation of x minus x bar whole square by n. This all come in the square root. Or the formula square root is summation of x square by n minus x bar square. This is the formula of standard deviation. If you write the same without square root, it becomes variance. Okay, so that that is only the difference. Now, if you see this question, a baller scores for the six games are given. Using this data, compute the 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 descriptive status standard deviation variance coefficient of variation. So your values are one eighty two. Your values are one eighty two. Your values are one eighty two. You have sorry, your values are one eighty two. Then you have values one eighty two, one sixty eight, one eighty four, one sixty eight. One eighty four, one eighty two, one sixty eight, one eighty four. One eighty two, one sixty eight, one eighty four, one ninety, one seventy, one ninety, one seventy, one seventy four. What I can do? I can do this sum. So you can use calculator and do this sum. Talking of square, you can do the square.
So once you get uh, X, then I can find the average. Sum, what is average sum? Sum divided by total number of terms. How many terms are there? this will give you the average now you can use the formula of standard deviation you if you want to find variance or standard deviation variance if you want to find variance that is equal to sum of x square by n minus x bar square sum of x square is 186 uh, 780 divide by n n n is how much divide by the n n basically means the count how many variables are there you have six variable so this is sum of x square by n minus x bar square x bar is 176.333 whole square so you can just simply solve this this is three double one three zero minus x bar square x bar square means what x bar square is what sum of x by six whole square This is 31093.44. You'll get the standard deviation and variance. So, this is a variance. 36.55. So, your variance is 36.5555. That is your variance 36.555. If you want standard deviation, the square root of this, that would be 6. Point something. The variance is 36.55, standard deviation is 6.046, and the coefficient of standard and the coefficient. If I say this is standard deviation, so this 36.55 that is a variance. Standard deviation, if you find that is 6.046, you get the standard deviation. Now, if I ask you what is the variance coefficient of variation, that is standard deviation by mean into 100. So standard deviation is 6.046 mean mean is how much how much is the mean mean is 176.3333 into 100 so this into 100 divide by average 3.4275 Any doubt, anyone? So this is your coefficient of variation. This is your standard deviation. This is your variance. Anyone, any doubt?
now the same thing what you have you can calculate same thing you could have found x minus average on x x minus average on x this is your average on x so if you do like this you will get the same answer when you find the average on x okay then find the square of this Now what I can do, I can find this average value, the sum of this, then the average, this divide by six, this would be the average, and then the square root of this, square root of this. This will give you the standard deviation. So if you understand what is standard deviation, other formula standard deviation, Write sigma is under root of summation, under root of summation x minus x bar whole square by n. Or if you want direct formula, you can use direct formula SPDP. You simply use the direct formula, you select the data, you will get the same answer. You do any way, you will get the same answer. I hope you understood the concept of standard deviation. If you get a raw data, how will you calculate the standard deviation? Either you can calculate by using this formula or you can calculate the standard deviation by the formula under root of summation of x square by n minus x bar square. If you use any formula, you will get the value standard deviation. Any doubt, anyone, any question? Anything you want to ask for me, Mega, Raf, 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 Naz, Pooja, Sujan, anything you want to ask. So this much I will do in today's class. We'll continue discussing tomorrow. So I hope you understood this. I'll send you separate videos on quartile deviation, mean deviations, okay, uh, range, separate videos on them. You can watch them, you can go through them to more about them. So right now, because of limitation of time, I'll, I have not discussed more about quartile deviation, mean deviations, and all. I, I'll only focus on standard deviation for, for our BC syllabus. Move for more knowledge, I'll give you more videos to go through them. Any doubt, any question, anyone? Can we wind up the class? Okay, everyone, then I'll see you all tomorrow. Till then, take care of yourself.